Good evening, Nights Live Talk. Thursday night on the East Coast. Boy, it's been getting chilly in the evening. Sorry, we're bouncing around a little. <clears throat> Kids are doing homework and stuff. It's loud in there. Um, it's been chilly in the evenings. Holy smokes. It was like pretty nice today. The wind had a chill to it. But man, it's gotten cold every night this week. Very cold quick. The minute that sun starts to drop. <sighs> Hopefully my teeth don't act up too much in this video. I apologize. They're really bothering me lately. That's why you don't do drugs. You take care of yourself. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a narcissist story. I think this will be part three of... I was born a nice kid, and um, I'm going to include an email in there from someone anonymously. Thank you for the email, the person that sent it. You are very talented, very, very talented. Holy smokes, I hope I get to work with you at some point in life. Very, very talented. Holy Christ. These people that write me, you guys, you would not believe the level of the caliber of people, some of them. You would not believe it. I got a couple of them today. My jaw almost dropped when they were who, who they were from. Um, but I have to keep it anonymous. So we're going to tell a story about my grandfather on my mother's side. I loved him. I love all my family, even though they fucked up. I love him daily. He was a Marine. He fought in the Korean War. He, I know he went through hell over there. He was a heavy drinker. Sometimes he would tell me what he went through in the Korean War over there. He was in charge of protecting orphanages and because they wanted to kill hurt babies and stuff over there. I don't know what side it was, this and that. He told me stories when he was come in late at night and I'd be sleeping at my grandmother's and grandfather's on the weekends. My grandmother was so good to me. She would make me English muffins. And bacon. I didn't like eggs when I was younger, but she would have made them if I wanted them. She was a saint. She'd make me English muffins and bacon. And she would uh, make me hot chocolate with ready whip, whipped cream on the top. She was so good to me. I miss you, Nana. I miss you, Pop, too. I miss both of them. I miss all my family. I just won't deal with them, as I say continuously. I sound like a broken record, but for new viewers... But my grandfather took care of the orphanages. My, they, I've, I, my parents still have his book. Each People in my family have a lot of pictures of him. I didn't get much when he died. They went through that house and ransacked it quick. Um, and I have a love-hate relationship with him, so it's kind of screwed up. But I have a table that I put things from people I care about, from little relics and stuff. And the two things I got from him are... A picture of him he was an iron worker I want to say or pile driver he built bridges he built the um, he built the hurricane barrier downtown um, downtown Providence he built that he fell off I want to say the Newport or Jamestown bridge in the middle of winter and lived survived tough guy a lot of people say I remind him a lot of him big hands fat hands He was a Marine. He married my grandmother when he came back from war or whatever. He got in trouble in high school. He uh, he was like a greaser, I think they were called or whatever. You know what I mean? He was into that shit like that. He grew up on the east in East Providence, um, right over the bridge. And he was, I believe, he was like Scottish and Native American. They were like, I have a lot of Native blood, supposedly a some. I never go get one of them tests. I won't get my genetics tested, but I've had family get it tested and it came back with, um, I think it's Inuit blood. It's like Alaskan and some Cherokee. Um, and he was both of those things. But he was a heavy drinker, very heavy drinker. And it sucks because people love him. I see like... 
people my parents' age that he would go to the bar with and see and shit. And they're like, oh, like, love him, love him, love him, this, that, and the other thing. But what they fail to realize is, and it hurts me, and I know they're trying to tell me how great my grandfather was, but the thing that bothers me is, and it's no hate on you guys, but yeah, he was great to you guys sitting in the bar fucking off and all that shit. Well, I was in Boston for 25 years. He never came and seen me once. Not once. Never came to one game I ever played in. I don't know if it's narcissism or alcoholism or both or PTSD. I don't know if he had anxiety. But I don't think he did. If he did, I don't know. Maybe he felt comfortable, more comfortable at the bar with people around him or whatever. But he was a wild man. He was a tough guy. He's a badass from everything I heard. Very smart. His father was an author. author or stepfather, one or the other. Sorry. Oh. The stories get me worked up too. I think that that's why. I think that's why I get like this. Oh. That's why I show you guys what this shit does to people too. It could be my teeth, it could be uh nervousness, I don't know what it is, but whew, I'm sorry. But I show it all because this is live. This is real shit. Well, yeah, everyone thinks he was awesome. And my mom has this thought in her head of how great a guy he was and all this shit. He wasn't all bad. But he had plenty of chances to come see me play ball. Never did. Taught me how to mix drinks for him real young down in Florida. During the OJ trial. Oh, that was a horrible trip, right? We go down to Florida. We we spend like a week down there every every vacation. My grandmother and grandfather decide they want to start going down and seeing my aunt and uncle, great uncle. I miss them so much. My great aunt and great uncle, my uncle Eddie, I love him so much. He was everything my grandfather should have been. He would give us cards. He would go to ball games with us and hooters and shit. He was a wonderful man. Wonderful, wonderful man. Big Ed. And my grandfather would like say like little shit to him sometimes. Like be a dickhead. I think he was jealous of him. I don't care if my family watches this shit. It's the truth. It's the shit you see in a fucked up family. Make little comments. This, that, and the other thing. And fucking Ed, Big Ed was awesome, man. And his whole his my grit my my mom's cousins are wonderful people. You all know who you are. Joe, Ed, the girls, Jules, Jean, love yous. Their kids love yous. Sorry, I don't see yous anymore. Fucking Eddie still running marathons. I bet he's a fucking animal. I love you, Beast, Iron Man. He went through hell too in his life. He's had shit happen to him. That I won't speak about. Awesome guy. I fucking love him. I love them all. But Ed would come see my grandmother all the time. Every year because it was his godmother. On the holidays no matter what. Little Eddie. But I don't know if my grandfather was a narcissist or not. I know he was an alcoholic. I can't even look at grapefruit juice to this day from the smell of it, mixing his drinks as a little kid. He taught me on that Florida trip. Sorry, lost my place. And my parents, my great, my grandparents get the place in Florida to hang with my great aunt and uncle Ed, the one I was telling you about, the old one that would give us cards and take us to Hooters and he'd go to baseball games with us and lightning games. Baseball games at fucking Tropicana Field. We go watch the Rays. Just something to do down there. Other than go to the beach. 
good times, most of them, most of them, and, uh, oh, this one hurts, we're down there, and it was the same trip my grandfather taught me how to make a mixed drinks, oh, I can smell the grapefruit juice just thinking about it, <laughs> yuck, oh, and I remember we went to the beach that day. We took a, we, my mom, me, my brother and father, and my grandmother went to Madeira Beach. And I took a nap. I come home that night. Oh, no, excuse me. I took a, I took a shower and took a nap. And earlier that day, before we had left, my Aunt Doris had something happen to her and she she had to get taken in an ambulance to the hospital. And she didn't make it. That night after I woke up from my nap, I woke up to find out she had passed. Rest in peace, Aunt Doris. She was awesome. 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 I remember the year before we were down there, my grandmother goes... Uh, calls us on the phone and it was around Easter time and shit and telling us all this stuff and my parents would take us to go see condominiums and shit and timeshares to get free fucking tickets to go to Disney so we'd have to go march around fucking a timeshare for half a day or a day to get a free fucking pass to Disney so we could go I don't know if it's right or wrong it was fucking boring I know that it wasn't fun. But I remember telling my grandmother on the phone and my Aunt Doris. It's like one of my great memories with her. And she fucking was laughing her ass off part of my language. I'm like, yeah, we went and looked at condoms today. Uh, man, we went and looked at condoms today. Some of them were beautiful. It was so boring. At least we got to go tickets for Disney, though. And my Aunt Doris thought it was the funniest thing. Me telling my grandmother we went and looked at condoms. Instead of condos, I'm just like, yeah, condoms, yeah, <laughs> look at condoms and shit. I don't know. I think it's funny. It's funny. I was a little fucking chubby kid. Um, and it's weird. Most of the women in my life have been amazing to me. Both my aunts on my mother's side never did any of the shady shit everyone else did. Neither did any of the women really on that side. My father's side, his sister's a fucking beauty. The women on my dad's side, as, as, as far as how they treat me, have been good besides my aunt and my grandmother. Um, and that's how I feel about it. I don't care how others feel about it. It's the truth. It's how they treated me. They could have been nice to you. They weren't nice to me. But my grandfather was a heavy boozer till the day he died. Big tuna fisherman. He used to pull like shit what my uncle, my uncle would tell me stories. He'd get real jealous of my uncle it sounded like. My uncle used to core hog as a little kid like in junior high had his own skiff. And would go out on Greenwich Bay. And my grandfather would get jealous. And like learned how to do it himself. And he told me some stories where my grandfather just wasn't too nice to him. So I tell you guys this shit affects generations. It affects people. And my grandfather would do shitty shit. He like sold some boat trailer on my, my dad and my uncle without telling him to make some fucking money. He uh... They were moving. They sold their, their house. On North Socket Road. Beautiful home. Huge backyard. Learned how to mow grass there when I was like five. Give me five bucks to fucking mow. Like <laughs> well over an acre. But whatever. It was a lot of money back then. In the 80s. These aren't to pick on people as much as they are to show, show what fucking abuse does. And I always had an emptiness in me. From my grandfather not going to my games. 
not going to anything. Um, not coming to see me in the hospital. You know, if he wasn't at the bar, he was sitting in his fucking lounge chair, chilling out. I don't know yet. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was narcissism. I don't know if it was from the war, but it was trauma. Something, something made it where he couldn't fucking love right or alcohol. I don't know what to one. I don't know. I don't know which one. Caught a fucking Dewey and beat up my fucking dad's sister's third or fourth husband because he was driving by the house giving us middle fingers. My aunt's new husband after they fucking changed the will and we didn't get anything. Not that it matters at this point. I don't give a fuck about it. And the guy's not a nice guy. People know who he is around here. Some people like him, some don't. I don't like him. Fuck him. Whatever. It's all in the past. It has no bearing on my life now. But my grandfather fucking went and beat the guy up. Well into his 60s. d fucking asshole. Drive by our house. Giving us the finger. My father wanted to kill him. Oh, my father wanted him so bad. And my grandfather begged my father not to do it. That he would handle it. And he handled it. Oh, he handled it. Did not fucking play. Well, he got in trouble over it. The guy is a fucking cop calling asshole. I think he still leeches off my fucking aunt, I'm sure. They live in that house. Their kids didn't get any other house either. None of us grandkids got it. Just her and him. Is what it is. But my grandfather made his bed and had to lay in it. Um, but him not going to all those games and shit hurt me bad hurt me bad I make National Honor Society um a lot a lot up until like 10th grade I was a fucking straight A student straight A student and between everything in life finally caught up to me between my party and, and the dysfunction caught up to me but it always broke my fucking heart that my grandfather never went to shit and couldn't come see me laying in the hospital. You know, I, I never understood it. Never understood it. It was only a 60 mile ride from Providence to Boston. He couldn't fucking do it. He couldn't do it. I don't know why. I'll never know why. I'll never know why now. So I have to get over it. You know what I mean? And I can't argue with people in my family telling me how wonderful he was. He did some good shit. He did some bad shit. But I don't have a ton of memories with him. Don't. Other than him letting me watch movies on the VCR. One fuck. I love fucking movies. Uh, you guys know it. One, one, one Thanksgiving or Christmas. I must have watched Back to the Future ten times in one day. He let me. He let me. I love Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox, God bless your soul. He's going through it bad right now. Strong man. You need some motivation? Check out Michael J. Fox's last interview he did on national TV. It broke my heart. I cried like a baby. My girl had to come and fucking put her arm around me. Because I love him so much. And he reminds me of my uncle. One of my uncles I don't talk to anymore either. Because they share the same name as him in that back uh, to the back to the future shit. The people I tell you stories about, they're not all bad, but they they fucked me over too many times. Fucked me over too many times. And the times they do it, are the worst fucking possible times they could have fucked me. Part of my language. Oh, <sighs> uh, and that's why I continue to cut it out. And that's why I think it's narcissism. With a lot of people because they don't change. And to the person that wrote me the email that I'm speaking on right now. That goes through it. That doesn't want their story told. Um, and your mother in your situation. Her mother passed in a rough way. And she was asking. Kind of saying like not understanding why her mom could not apologize. And she would have been there in a heartbeat. And these people just don't apologize. They don't. They won't. 
I don't know why. I don't know if it's alcoholism. I don't know if it's narcissism, mental disease, illness, whatever. But I know one thing for sure. It's all trauma related. It's always usually got drugs involved or alcohol or abuse. They're all tied together. It's why we have to treat our children right. This is why you have to stop allowing yourself to be treated like crap by people like this. And that's why I tell these stories. And I hope you continue to do what you do. The person that I'm talking to in this email. Oh, these get me worked up. All I can think about is my, my grandfather's drink and the fucking... The smell of vodka and grapefruit juice right now, even though I'm drinking a coffee. These stories take me right back. This is why people get triggered from trauma. You guys can see it. I'm fucking gagging when I tell a lot of these stories. Between getting worked up. My teeth not fitting. And deviated septum from doing drugs and fucking getting in brawls. And, and the story I'm telling, it brings me back to that place. And when you argue with dysfunction and they bring up all this shit, it takes you right back there. Why would you want to keep doing that? Stop beating yourself up over it. Stop wondering why. I just say it is what it is. I think about it here and there. Try to remember some of the good. But I don't try to figure it out anymore. I just know it wasn't right. And I don't want to do it to anyone else. And I won't. From this day forward. Sorry. <sighs> Ten seconds to think of a song. <clears throat> We're running in the shadows of the night. Oh, baby, take my hand to be all right. In the end. It's a song that came to mind. I don't know why. It's Nate's Live Talk. Just a story on something that effed me up for a long time, gave me a huge resentment. Get them resentments out of you. Get the resentment out of you. It will help a lot. Let it go. Like that Disney movie song says it. My girl sings it all the time. It's true. Let it go. Let it go. It's corny. But it's true. Let it go. Do not let this continue. Let it go. Let it go. Let go of the people that do that to you. Let go of the things that do that to you. Let go of the drugs. If you have a problem, let go of the alcohol. If it's a problem, let go of that shit. Don't hold on to it. Anything like that. I love you guys. I gotta run. Have a great night. Tomorrow, Friday. Yay. Love it. Love you guys. Nate's Live Talk on YouTube. Please subscribe, like, and share. If you want to write a story or anything to me, Nate's Live Talk at Yahoo.com. I had to can the Facebook page. I was getting too much shit. I'm sorry. All I have is my personal one. People locally can get a hold of me. If you need to get a hold of me, hit up the my Instagram or the email. The Instagram's just Nate's Live Talk. I love you guys. Have a great night.